If you've ever wondered how YouTube got so good at predicting exactly what'll keep you around, ask Guillaume. He worked on the site's recommendation AI, and he marveled at its power to sweep a viewer along from one video to the next, setting them adrift on a stream of idle viewing time. He celebrated as these streams multiplied and gathered strength, but he also detected an alarming undercurrent. It was always giving you the same uh, kind of content that you've already watched. You couldn't get away from that. So you couldn't discover new things. You couldn't uh, expand your brain. You couldn't see other point of views. You were only going to go down a rabbit hole by design. When you hit play, inside of YouTube's server, it wakes up this avatar voodoo doll version of you based on all your click patterns and everyone else's click patterns that are kind of like the nail filings and hair clippings and everyone else's nail filings and hair clippings. So this voodoo doll starts to look and act just like you. And then they test, like they're throwing all these little you know, video darts at you and see, if I test these 100 million darts, which video is most likely to keep you here? Guillaume observed a subtle but unmistakable tilt in the recommendations. It seemed to favor extreme content. No matter where you start, YouTube always seemed to want to send you somewhere a little bit more crazy. What Guillaume was seeing was algorithmic extremism. So today on the show, Guillaume Chaslow, AI expert and founder of the nonprofit Algo Transparency, will explain why, for the sake of humanity, we must shed light on these algorithms. I'm Tristan Harris. And I'm Aza Raskin. This is your undivided attention. Why are they even doing these recommendations? I mean, you could imagine landing on a video site, you watch a video, but there's no recommendations. So like, why, why is recommendations so important to YouTube? So more than 70% of their views come from the recommendation. Uh, that's huge, knowing that they do 1 billion hours of watch time every single day, 70% of that is like a tremendous amount of uh, watch time. Yeah, it's sort of like it, this is the content that we are, that 700 million hours of dosing humanity with something that humanity hasn't chosen. Exactly. So you have ve very little choice uh, on this content because the YouTube algorithm has 10, 10 billion videos or I don't know how many billion videos and it chooses the 10 to show to you in front of your screen. And then you have just a tiny little choice between those 10 to choose which one you want to, to see. So, so it has... 99.99999% of the choice is from an algorithm that you don't understand and you don't control. So I'm like, okay, I'm just getting shown stuff that I like clearly have a revealed preference for that I'm clicking on or watching um, or that works on other people. Besides filter bubbles, what harm does that create? So it creates a, a bunch of arms. Like, so one, one I show is conspiracy theories because conspiracy theories are, are really easy to make. You can just make your own conspiracy theories in like one hour, show it, uh, and then it get you can get millions of views. They're addictive because people who live in this filter bubble of conspiracy theories and they don't watch the classical media, so they spend more time on YouTube. So every single of their watch uh, will have more watch, more total watch time. So it will have much more weight on the algorithm. So the more the more people watch them, the, the more they get recommended. It's like it's like a vicious circle. So you're saying that conspiracy theories are very effective at grabbing our attention um, and keeping us around, and they become kind of like black holes. That if the system is just recommending. Uh, the stuff that people click on, one of the techniques is going to find is recommend conspiracy videos because conspiracy videos are very effective. Is that what you're saying? I exactly. That's the same way a black hole creates and only grows bigger. Like by design, this conspiracy theory can only grow bigger because then people who are in there spend more time than others. Imagine you say you're someone who doesn't trust the media. You're going to spend more time on YouTube. So since you spend more time on YouTube, uh, the algorithm think you're better than anybody else for, for the algorithm. That's the definition of better for it. It's who spends more time. So it will recommend you more. So there's like this vicious circle. So it's not only like don't trust the media, but it's with any uh, moral, the algorithm by design will be anti-moral. So if you have like a moral in the society, say like racism is bad, humans are, are equal and people think no, that racism is good, they will spend more time on YouTube, so they will get recommended more by the algorithm. So like the anti-moral will be favored by the algorithm. So 
Google is saying, yeah, we give a place for, for these people who are not accepted by, by society. We give a, them a place to, to express themselves on. That's, I have no problem with that. But what I have a problem is that it's structurally, systematically anti-moral. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if we reach a, a new moral, let's say we, we go towards a moral in, in which like, okay, racism is great, then the anti-moral will will win again. So it's, it's just ridiculous. What I think I'm hearing you saying is that because the AI doesn't have a sense and the recommendation system doesn't have a sense of what's right and what's wrong, all it has a sense for is what works, yep. that we're sort of A-B testing our way with the smartest supercomputers pointed at our minds to find sort of the soft underbellies to just be like, what's effective? And so we're A-B testing our way towards anti-morality or immorality or amorality. Yep. Are there any specific examples that like can light up my mind? like the flat earth conspiracy theory for instance got hundreds of millions of recommendations for something hundreds of millions of recommendations yeah it's like for something that's completely absurd so one of the arguments was like we're just showing what people make but that's not true because if you search on YouTube is yours flat or not you had 35% of search results were flat earth conspiracy theories but then if you followed recommendations uh, like I followed uh, thousands of recommendations and then took like the 20 most recommended videos. On the, out of these 20 most recommended videos, 90% uh, were flat earth conspiracy theories. 90%, mm, that's insane. Well, so I think um, one thing that people tend to, to think about with this is, I mean, if you just go back to the, just the simple human experience of YouTube, like why are we spending all this time? And the average watch time per day is 60 minutes now. The YouTube product officer, uh, chief product officer, Neil Mohan said, it's because our recommendations are getting that good. So. The, wa the reason that watch time is going up is because the recommendation system is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every year. And we're not talking about the fact that this is a huge asymmetry of power. They have supercomputers. I mean, who has the biggest supercomputers yes. in the world? It's Google and it's Facebook. Um, and so, and so we blame ourselves. We blame teenagers. We're like, hey, this You teenager, should have more self-control. Yeah, they, you have bad parenting. You're, you're a bad person. But you have a supercomputer playing against your brain, as you said, and uh, it will find your weaknesses, whatever you... It's already studied the weaknesses of billions of people. It will find them. So my weakness, for instance, is uh, plane landing videos. Mm. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated by plane landing videos. There's a lot, lot of that uh, on YouTube. And I'm like, if you would ask me, do you want to watch accidents and plane landing videos, I would say, no, never show me, <laughs> show me that. I don't right. want to waste my time watching that. But you can't say that to YouTube. So it will show it again and again. And I lost so much time watching this plane landing video. This is ridiculous. So YouTube is discovering these weaknesses for so many different demographics, right? And so you have this example of, um, you know, teen girls uh, who started watching dieting videos, like, you know, what kind of food should I eat? they get recommended anorexia videos because they're better at holding on to that demographic. And they recommended this millions and millions of times. Um, you have this other example, um, you know, of you watch a 9-11 news video and it recommended 9-11 conspiracy theories. And the number uh, with Alex Jones, for example, always stunned me. You said that it recommended Alex Jones videos 15 billion times. Yeah, and that's that's a lower estimate. I think it's it's much more, but we we have no idea how, how big it is.